and welcome to another bite-sized piece of retro gaming history with Replay Retro Shorts. Way back in 2010, when the channel first launched, we took a look at industry veteran Trip Hawkins' vision of console gaming's future with the 3DO, specifically the Panasonic FZ1 system. Later, in 2014, we revisited the 3DO with the Gold Star variant, and now, at the beginning of 2016, we're going back again with a version produced in Japan by Sanyo. So without further ado, let's take a look at the Sanyo Tri 3DO system. And here it is, looking a lot more DVD player-like than any of its brothers. Although, obviously, DVD player technology was not around at this point. We were still a few years away. Uh, I think this is the nicest looking of the machines. I like this wavy effect in the plastic. I'm not sure how well that shows up. Um, if I turn it on its side there, you can see that nice wavy effect. As well as the heavily embossed 3DO logo on top, which I, I think looks really good, stamped into the plastic there. Stamped into this textured, textured top panel. At the front you have a mirrored panel like you would expect to find on many DVD players and VCRs. Um, behind that you can also see the ready light, which is basically the power light, and the access light for when the system is accessing the CD-ROM drive. The drive itself is a very sturdy drive, just like the FZ1 model, it has a very satisfying clunk when it goes back in, and the entire build of this unit seems very similar to the FZ1. It's a very sturdy, very solid feeling unit when you pick it up, um, unlike the Gold Star, which felt a little bit flimsier. Um, this is much more like Panasonic's FZ1 system, much sturdier, much stronger. Um, a really good build, feel of build quality. You of course also have your power button here, and your disk drive opening and closing button. Just underneath that you find the one controller port, because obviously the controllers for the 3DO are daisy chained, so you only need one port. Underneath the usual labels and information that you'd expect to find, as well as a couple of rubberized feet to stop it slipping about. On this side, there is a panel behind which is the AV expansion port, which was for a video module to be attached to the system. Doesn't look quite as good when it's attached to this as it does with some of the other systems. It's not quite as well hidden away on the, on the uh, Sanyo version. But I don't believe many people bought those anyway. Round the back then, you can see you have your video connections. I obviously just use these standard ports here, but you have also got the use of S-Video if that's what floats your boat. You also have an expansion port here, which is for the optional memory module, which I have as it came with my FZ1, so I can use it with this as well, transfer game saves across, which is very useful. On the other side, not a lot going on there. And that takes us back to the front. You can see, of course, that the power cable is your two-prong, as this is a Japanese system, which means if you are using it over here in the UK, you will need an adapter and you'll also need a step-down just to make sure that you don't fry the internal power supply. Very important that whenever you're importing a system that has an internal power su uh, supply, internal power transformer, you make sure you use a step-down to provide the correct voltage. You don't want to be frying your new system. The controller is pretty much identical to the Panasonic version, apart from the obvious Sanyo logo. Other than that, it is basically the same. You have your headphone port and volume at the bottom of it, your standard D-pad with the media center controls around the side of it, if the camera can make those out. And then three buttons, one with a dimple to help you identify it without looking at the controller. On the top, you have your L and R buttons, just as with the other controllers, and behind this flap you find the daisy chaining port for connecting the Player 2 controller. Not everyone's a fan of that system, I quite like it. And that is pretty much all there is to say about the Sanyo Tri 3DO Interactive Multiplayer. Now as we already know, the 3DO format failed for a number of reasons. Primarily the high price point of the hardware due to the unique and highly unusual licensing structure. However, there are still more interesting variants produced during the format's short life, which I haven't got hold of yet. Including the Robo 3DO with its CD multi-changer allowing up to five games to be swapped without removing discs, 
the Creative Labs ISA card and CD-ROM drive bundle allowing PC gamers to upgrade their machines to the 3DO standard, the base level FZ10 Panasonic model, and the very rare PlayStation-esque Alive 2 from Goldstar, which was also branded as LG. So hopefully we'll be revisiting this doomed format again in the future. That's all for this episode of Shorts, but don't forget to follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and of course stay tuned for more retro gaming history. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.